abusia e ma kwa ba so nkoso e ba pog media so ene yere me ko highway ni so highway ni de ensem bebre o so aye nso ya je pene se abe me abuja fo no ehu de e ko ene de e ba na den na e ko so e wo highway ni so eye john dramani mahama ene ne manifesto land no ensema odetu ga ensema ekese oba power 2025 oba nioma obe ya magana ensema like odi to gana for anima like gana for e bona ba so mo chese ono ni obi a chese obi to me aba be reset gana the manifesto no e no ho nsem no speech no ye de ni nyina e bre ma chese e ye speech a e mo du e ye ensema e to akoma so a e bu sun a ye be pese e be mi abija fo no be mi akona ya kwa ko ti ensema john dramani mahama e di to ja on his manifesto launch na enye asem ketu akwa busu na answer na ebe kono owo ensem can be afa share your comment section like na share ma afa from so answer into me and can be aha apog media political trending stories are a make waves no yen so ya je pene se ebe brem mera ma se needs a reset our governance needs a reset and our attitudes need a reset. We need a government that will galvanize the efforts of all Ghanaians, irrespective of ethnicity, religion, or party affiliation. We need a government that will allow all businesses to thrive, whether owned by domestic investors or foreign investors, no matter their ethnic, religious, or partisan colors of its owner. We need to make a change, a change that will usher in a government that is responsible and accountable. We need to open up this country for business again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to present to you our manifesto. We need a leadership that will crack the ship when its own appointees go down the wrong track. We need a responsive government that will respect the rights and freedoms of our citizens, including journalists, and address the ongoing decay of state institutions and fight corruption by deploying the operation Recover All the Loot Principle. Operation Recover All the Loot Strategy, and that is O R A L. Ladies and gentlemen, Today we are presenting to you a manifesto that will help take back your future, take the future of Ghana back into the hands of the Ghanaian people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will at this point give you some highlights of our manifesto, after which my running mate and by God's grace, the next Vice President of the, Ga uh, the Republic of Ghana. <laughs> Professor Jane Nana Opokwa Jimang, a prominent daughter of the Central Region, and other presenters will delve into other areas of the manifesto. Ladies and gentlemen, first is resetting the economy for prosperity. In the first 120 days in office, we will hold a national economic dialogue to draw up a four-year fiscal consolidation plan. We would rationalize taxes, abolishing, among others, the obnoxious e-levy. <laughs> the COVID levy and the 10% levy on bet winnings. duties and levies on 
on vehicles and equipment meant for industrial and agricultural purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, we will rationalize port fees and charges and implement emergency measures to stabilize the city and the macroeconomic environment. Ladies and gentlemen, we will use the price stabilization and recovery levy to cushion customers, uh, consumers of petroleum products. We will investigate the MPP's opaque gold, gold for oil deal. We will review the gold purchase program of the Bank of Ghana and will restore the licenses of wrongly, wrongfully collapsed banks and financial institutions. We will increase indigenous participation in the banking and financial sector. And we will free the statutory funds, the GET Fund, NHIL, Road Fund, to be able to achieve their mandated objectives. Ladies and gentlemen, alleviating the current economic hardships. And one of our first projects, programs, is the No Fee Stress Policy. There are many students who are unable to take up their places in tertiary educational institutions because they cannot afford to pay their academic user fees, their academic fees. And so we'll take that stress off them. For the first year, they will not be required to pay fees. And I assure the universities it will not affect their internal generated funds. We're going to give the money to the student's loan. The student loan will pay it to the universities as a grant. It will be paid as a grant, not as a loan. And aside from that, we're going to increase the subvention that goes to our public universities so that we can improve quality and learning in those universities. We will provide free tertiary education for all persons with disability. And we will provide free sanitary pads for girls in school. If you remember, Nana Jane started that policy with a World Bank facility and they called that loan the PAD loan. Yes, we are proud of the PAD loan. It will allow our young girls who are going through their periods to be neat and hygienic and not to miss school, be able to go to school all year round. We will uncap the national health insurance levy. Currently, there's a cap on the levy. And so, a certain portion of the levy goes into the consolidated fund. And so, the health insurance authority is not able to pay the health facilities, reimburse them for the services that they provide. We will uncap the health insurance so that all the national health insurance levy will go into the national health insurance fund so that they can pay the hospitals for looking after our people. And of course, this is associated with it. We'll reprioritize the health sector by ensuring timely releases of payment to service providers. We established the Ghana Medical Care Trust, into brackets, somebody calls it Mahama Cares, to support persons with chronic diseases such as kidney failure, cancer, sickle cell, diabetes, hypertension, and other health-related diseases. We'll also introduce the community pharmacy concept, and that will encourage people to go to your local pharmacy and go have your blood pressure taken and your sugar checked, so that if you have diabetes or high blood pressure, we're able to know early so that you can get treatment and be able to survive. We'll implement, we'll implement free primary health care services. So if you go to a CHIPS compound or a health center, whether you have a national health insurance card or not, you will be treated for free. Yeah. 
And so from the health center level down, polyclinic health center, CHIPS compound, if you go, you'll be uh, treated for free. From the district uh, referral hospital upwards, you use your, Ghana car, uh, your national health insurance card and you receive treatment. <laughs> We will expand health infrastructure to restore the automatic em employment and timely deployment of health workers. And so we're not going to wait till elections are coming and announce that we've opened the recruitment portal. The recruitment portal will be open and we'll do continuous employment of health workers, doctors and nurses. We need a first-class children's hospital in Ghana. The existing ch uh, children's hospital has outlived has outlived this usefulness. And so we're going to construct a state-of-the-art 500-bed specialist children's hospital in Accra. And so children who have sicknesses that cannot be handled in other parts of the country will come to Accra. There will be specialist pediatricians there to give them the care they deserve. Of course, we will expand, we will construct a state of the art, I've said that one. We will also construct a fertility center. There are a lot of mothers who cannot have children just because there's something wrong with the reproductive system. It can be corrected and they can have babies and enjoy the joy of motherhood. Prices that the private fertility hospitals charge are out of the range of most mothers. And so government will step in, will build a fertility center where mothers who want children can come for consultation and they will be giving the treatment so that they also can enjoy the joy of motherhood. I'll go quickly, we'll expand the facilities at the whole teaching hospital in order that it can provide specialist services and also be a quaternary hospital to serve the University of Health and Allied Sciences. In the whole of the OT corridor up to the northeastern part of the country, there's no trauma hospital. And so we'll build a trauma hospital there so that persons who are involved in accidents on the Eastern Corridor Road will have a place where they can be treated properly before they are transferred. We'll establish modern dialysis centers in hospitals in regions that don't have them. Currently, most of Upper West, my own hometown, Bole, and other places, if you have a kidney uh, ailment, the only place you can go for treatment is in Kumasi. And you have to go with your wife, your family, you have to find a place to stay, it is a burden. And so we want to make sure that every region has a modern dialysis center so that we can ease the burden on persons with kidney ailment. We will build modern hospitals in Boko, Yendi, and other underserved areas. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is the training of our... This is the 24 hour economic clock. One job, three shifts, three people. One, three, three. One job. Three shifts, three people. Obi Abe Didi. Ezu. A 
Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions for extraordinary results. And so businesses and public organizations will be encouraged to operate 24-7 in three shifts of eight hours each. This will boost production, it will increase employment and provide well-paying jobs. It will transform Ghana into an import substitution and export-led country. It will increase employment opportunities and revenue, and it will enhance access to public services. We will focus on some selected public institutions that have huge customer traffic. For instance, the ports and harbors should be open 24-7. That means we have to employ more workers at the port, we have to employ more customs officers, more GAPOHA uh, workers, more forklift operators and all that. We need customs. Customs should work 24-7, three shifts, so that at any time your items come, customs at any time of the day is open for business. You can go and process your uh, import things, uh, papers, and take your things out of the port. We must have a passport office that is operating longer than eight hours so that people who need passports and other site documentation can have access to it. We must have a DVLA that is working more shifts than one shift so that more people can get their licenses processed in a shorter time than the current waiting time. In the private sector, the sectors that we are looking to promote and encourage to run 24-7 and three shifts are first the agro-processing center sector. That is those who will process our cassava into cassava starch, cassava flour, gari and all that. There's a huge market in Africa for all these products and in other parts of the world. Manufacturing, that is industry. Manufacturing, that is industry. And so the textiles industry, the fruits uh, juice making industry, all the industries, the iron and steel industry, will be encouraged to run 24 7. The pharmaceutical se 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 sector, we want Ghana to be the pharmaceutical hub of the whole of Africa so that we'll produce medicines here and export them to all other African countries. Construction sites. We want our construction companies to work 24-7 all year, uh, all hours round, so that they can deliver our infrastructure faster than they currently do. Financial services, the same. Sanitation and garbage collection. It is better to collect garbage, baller, in the night, rather than collect the baller and be competing with cars in the daytime when we have rush hour traffic. Extractive industries, the mines, mining bauxite, mining gold, mining manganese, lithium, they must work 24-7, three shifts every day. Hospitality industry, our restaurants, our uh, 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 discotheques, our nightclubs, our hotels, 24-7, 24 hours a day. Retail centers, all the malls, there's no reason why you should start. People can come in the night time and buy items, so they should work longer than eight hours. Transportation services, there should be buses running 24 hours so that people who have to go to their jobs can be able to get a bus to go to their jobs. Security services. We need safety and security to be able to implement the 24-hour economy. And so we need more, more police officers. We need more soldiers. We need more prison officers, more fire service officers, more customs, more immigration. Now the support package for 24-hour businesses is to stimulate demand for 24-hour economic goods and services. And this will be supported by strategic investments in infrastructure, in security, in energy. We'll have public and private security architecture, cheaper and reliable electricity. That is a time of use tariff. So in the night when we're not using much of the power and it's going to waste, we can supply it to the 24-hour economy enclave at cheaper rates than we currently charge. Tax incentives to 
companies that will sign up for the 24-hour economy, they'll be giving tax incentives so they pay lower taxes, so they can reinvest invest what they have saved back into increasing their production. We'll give them support from the Ghana Exim Bank, especially for the agro-processing and manufacturing sectors that are going to be exporting. We'll support SMEs operating um, uh, capacity with catalytic investments to upgrade and generate jobs. The Accelerated Export Development Council. I'm going to chair that personally. We want to accelerate our exports. We're going to register more Ghanaian goods on the African continental free trade area so that we can export to other countries. And I'm going to chair that personally. And we'll meet every month and appraise where we are at in terms of encouraging Ghanaian businesses to export. This Accelerated Export Development Council will promote exports under the 24-hour economy. My running mate will talk more about this, so I will jump it. Women's Development Bank. Um, it will give low, low interest loans, particularly to women's uh, businesses. She will talk more about it, so let's jump it. The National Apprenticeship Program will be for self-employment, and it will also help People who have come out of school at different levels who want to go and learn a skill but their parents are unable to pay the masters for them to go and learn. The government through the district assemblies is going to register all master craftsmen. We're going to pay them and assign these young people to them so that they can learn a skill to go into the world of work. Um, Next slide, free technical and vocational training for young people. The time for drama, uh, grammar school education has passed. The time where you were judged by the long grammar you could speak has passed. We now need more technicians, more mechanics, more plumbers, more artisans. And so we're going to shift our focus from grammar school and build more technical and vocational educational schools so that our children who leave free SHS, who leave JHS and unable to continue can go and train as apprentices and be graduated with certificates. We'll provide them with startup capital to be able to start their own small businesses. We'll also use NVTI to train and test them so that they can get their certificates to enter the world of work. We have what we call the Jumara program. And this, this is the entrepreneurial program. Nobody says you must finish school and become an employee. You can finish school and become an employer and employ employees. And so every year we want to target 10,000 youth entrepreneurs to set up their own businesses. We will mentor them, we will monitor them, we will supervise them until they are able to stand on their own feet. And they will employ their colleagues instead of becoming empl empl employee employees. Business development. We exempt new and small businesses, that is small and medium enterprises, new and small businesses that are registered, and personal income tax of those businesses from the first two years after they are incorporated. So if you are a young person under this program and you set up your business, for two years you won't pay any corporate income tax. You start paying after two years. Because we want the business to be able to get a grounding and be able to stand on its feet before they start paying taxes. We we'll review the Customs Amendment Act to scrap the ban on salvage vehicles. Not everybody can afford a new vehicle. And so their vehicles in good shape, they must have had a small accident. We have young people in the magazine who are repairing these vehicles. If we say we're banning these vehicles, we're throwing those young people out of work. And so we we'll allow salvage vehicles to come in so that other people can buy vehicles at affordable rates. And if we do this, it will save the local automotive industry. And so the Swami Magazine, the Kokom Pays, the Aboso Kines will continue to do their business, even as we set up an automobile industry. We'll support the redevelopment of Kokom Pay, Aboso Kain, and all those magazines, so that it creates a more congenial environment for people to come and do uh, business. We will implement a Made in Ghana agenda for the production and consumption of Made in Ghana goods. 
government is going to use its budget to buy made in Ghana goods first. It's only when you can't get that good that you'll be allowed to buy a foreign product. If the good is produced in Ghana, you must buy it first. And so we're going to use government's financial muscle to encourage local production of goods and services. If you are, if you are a foreign uh, industry and you want us to buy your goods, come and establish the factory here and produce what you want us to buy here. We will launch an export Ghana policy and it is the Accelerated Economic Development Council that is going to oversee this export, uh, Ghana, export Ghana policy. And we're going to use that policy to facilitate exports and the African continental free trade area and also the ECOWAS trade liberalization. We will enhance the role of the Ghana Exim Bank in financing non-traditional exports. We will readjust their focus so that they are putting money into uh, uh, industries that are uh, exporting products, we'll, so that we can give them capital at a cheaper rate. Money, yo. Am I right? The money your pension scheme will introduce a money your pension scheme so that persons in the informal sector who want to put something aside for their pension and their retirement can put 10 Ghana cities a day, 5 Ghana cities a, a, a week, 50 Ghana cities a week. They will keep paying it so that when it gets to their turn for retirement, they have some money that they can rely on. We'll also, this pension scheme will cover commercial drivers and my uh, dear Okada riders. They will also be part of the pension scheme. It will also be extended to small-scale miners, farmers, fishermen, traders, and market women. People who receive cash on a daily basis. You put a little aside, if it's every week, you go and pay it into the money. Or you can use your mobile phone and pay, and your account will keep being updated. So after 15 years, that money has been invested. When you are retiring, you have your pot of uh, money so that you can be getting a pension every month in your old age. Uh, digital jobs initiatives. We'll partner the private sector to invest three billion dollars to leverage ICT for jobs. And this will be through the One Million Coders program. We announced this in 2020, and we didn't win power, so we couldn't implement it. Somebody lifted it from our 2020 manifesto and uh, quickly put it out as if it was yes. I said, go and look in 2020. You see that we had already put it there. But we will continue with our One Million Coders uh, program to train one million uh, people in coding and web development, software engineering, and others. We will stimulate demand for Made in Ghana software. We are exporting a lot of hard currency. When we import goods, we know that we are sending foreign currency out to buy those goods. When we import uh, food, we are sending money out to buy that food. But when we send money out to pay copyright to Microsoft, to Oracle, to all the people whose software we are running on our banks and all our online portals and all that, nobody sees it. And so if we are going to uh, uh, train one million coders to do software, web hosting and all that, we must create a demand for it locally. And so government will first see if we have the available software in-house before we allow anybody to buy software from outside. And so um, we we'll exchange payments for subscriptions to overseas vendors. We establish regional digital centers for business process outsourcing. Um, business process outsourcing is when you sit in Ghana and you get a contract from abroad to do a certain job. You're able to do it from here without being physically there. And so you can process parking tickets in New York. You can process various items that they want. At times when they have gone to bed, they need somebody to be taking calls and responding to clients. They sometimes outsource it to other countries. Ghana is a good center to take advantage.
advantage of this because our English is even clearer than many of the other countries that are doing the business process outsourcing. So people want Ghana to expand. Ezu. Invest 50 million in a fintech growth fund to promote digital entrepreneurs. I announced this long ago when I met the fintech entrepreneurs. Set up zonal ICT parks to make Ghana the innovation, artificial intelligence, and cyber security center of Africa. Redevelop the Dawa ICT park into a world center of excellence. Ghana's first flagship program for jobs. We'll work with the private sector to make Ghana the hub for pharmaceutical production. I've announced this already. We want our pharmaceutical industry to export drugs to all other African countries and other places. We'll develop an integrated aluminum industry for industrialization. We'll invest in the production of plastics, fertilizers, and other synthetic materials here. Expansion of the automotive and vehicle assembly sector. With this one, government is going, if we budget to buy vehicles, we're going to buy vehicles that have been assembled in Ghana. We will not buy vehicles from outside and bring them in. So all those who have set, uh, 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 all those who have set up automotive assembly plants here, if government needs vehicles every year, we're going to buy those vehicles from them, not from outside. We will promote light industrial manufacture, especially in the textiles and electronic products. Today I was speaking with uh, an investor, and um, he was talking about the textiles industry. And I told him, I said, unfortunately, we're not producing our own cotton. And he said, you don't need to produce your own cotton now. You can import cotton from Burkina Faso, you can import both, uh, cotton from Benin, and start your textile industry. And when you have started it, you can backward integrate it in your own cotton production. Brilliant idea. So I told him... And so... We'll revamp the textile and cotton and allied industries. We'll set up agro-industrial zones in all regions. I've said this already. We'll, we'll get a site in every region. Government will clear the site. We'll develop the site. We'll bring water, electricity to the site. And any private sector developer who wants to produce agro process, to buy agro um, uh, products and process can come and get a land within the agro zo uh, processing zone and start his business. So that he doesn't have to go so that he doesn't have to go and quarrel with families they'll sell him land uh, another person will come no the land was not for this one government will secure the land so that they can easily set up their businesses establish mini processing plants for cassava tomatoes uh, fruits set up cashew processing factories in bono bono east and Ahafo, where we have the most cashew you know set up uh, ginger processing plants in ot we look at the comparative advantage of every region and we'll set up the plants that suit that region. We're not doing one district, one factory. We're looking at every region's comparative advantage and we'll put in the processing capacity that will make use of their uh, products. Facilitate the construction of 20 medium scale animal feed processing plants and revamp the collapsing poultry industry. One of the major inputs that goes into poultry and livestock is the feed. It is very expensive because we import a lot of it currently. If we're producing more of it, we can get a lower price for the feed. And so we'll set up 20 uh, uh, feed processing plants so that they can process and produce feed locally. One area is the Bono area. I know the Doma area, there's a lot of poultry. We'll give poultry cages to all the young people who want to do poultry. Exim Bank will give them assistance to produce the, uh, uh, the uh, chicken. We'll produce uh, cold storage facilities and processing facilities so they can process their chicken and keep it in the cold storage facilities for, uh, ready for the market. Establish... Oh, you. It's gone. <laughs> okay. There is agriculture for jobs. We want to make agriculture more attractive through modernization to ensure food security and job creation. We we'll reduce food inflation to lower the high cost of living through our Agriculture for Economic Transformation uh, program. 
will roll out a Feed Ghana program, which is to boost food production, guarantee food security, and supply raw materials to industry. And this is my favorite uh, project, to establish farmer service centers in all agricultural production areas. And in each farmer service center, there will be tractors, there will be harvesters, there will be plows, there will be harrows, there will be planters, everything you need to do modernized farming. And our farmers are going to be registered within the catchment area of the farmer service center. And at the beginning of the year, you go to your farmer uh, the, the planting season, you go to your farmer service center, they will provide you with the services, give you the fertilizer, give you the improved seeds, plow for you, plant for you. And when you harvest and you sell your crops, you come and pay the cost of the inputs that they gave you. We will create farm banks with agricultural zones to ease access to land and irrigation facilities for agricultural purposes and encourage young people to go into farming. We need to bring more of our land into irrigation because you know what happened this year. There was a drought in the north and parts of Bono region for almost eight weeks the rain didn't fall and so people have lost their crops. And so we will go more for irrigation, even if small scale, boreholes, uh, we have the Volta River. All all along the banks of the Volta River, we can develop irrigation facilities. Promoting good governance and combating corruption remarkably reduced the size of government to 60 ministers. No more than 60 ministers. And so there will be other things for other people to do. We all can be ministers. I know when I say 60 ministers, I say, yeah, but, you know, there are, there are people aiming to become ministers. But we all can be ministers. So we will choose 60 ministers, but others would have other assignments that they can do. Uh, address the benefit disparities between Article 71 holders. I've said this already. We have two public servants, Article 71 and then the others who are under the fair wages. And so we want to bridge the disparity between them so that all of us come under an independent emoluments committee and our salaries and emoluments are determined from the smallest watchman to the president who will determine our salaries and wages. A ruthless war against corruption. Operation Recover All the Loot. Oral. Is to prohibit political appointees and a politically exposed persons, not only political appointees, political appointees and politically exposed persons and all seven public officials from purchasing state assets. So it's not only me who cannot buy a state asset, my wife Lodina cannot buy a state asset, my son Sharaf or Shahid or Farida cannot buy a state asset because they are politically exposed persons. Reopen investigations into major unresolved cases, including the Ayawasu West Wagombai election violence, the 2020 election killings, the unresolved murder of Ahmed Swale and Silas Wulo Chami. There are all these cases that occurred under this administration. They refuse to investigate them. Even where they've investigated, they've refused to implement the reports. They've not paid any compensation to the persons who are affected. We're going to look at all that and we'll deal with it. Dedicate equitable attention to all levels of education. Improve free SHS. Improve the quality of food for our children. Cancel the double track so that all our children can go to school at the same time. We are going to provide dedicated and sustainable source of funding for free SHS. The problem with the free SHS is it has no dedicated funding. And so it's subject to the hazards of the budget. And often the consolidated fund does not release funds. And so children go hungry because the funds have not arrived. Um, decentralize the procurement of food for SHSs to boost local economies. The feeding grant will go to the schools, to the headmasters and the business, and they will go to the local market and buy the beans, the granuts, the rice, the cassava dough, the agbelima, the meat from the local market, so that the town in which the school is uh, uh, located can also benefit uh, from, from, from that. It will also allow the headmasters to provide more nutritious foods than the current system. Them. I said this already, implement a no academic uh, fees policy for level 100 students, no fee stress policy. 
We will use 5G and low earth orbit systems to improve the quality of education across the country by extending course tutorials, uh, course tutorials to students everywhere. We have good masters in different schools. And so for us, perhaps the best mathematics master is in Wesley Girls. The best French teacher is in Ghana Secondary School. The best geography teacher is in uh, GSTS. Ghana Education Service will select these teachers and they will teach they will be filmed teaching the course online. They will teach online and will upload this uh, uh, course content on YouTube. And so you can go on YouTube and download what you want. If it's mathematics, you download it. If it's geography, you download it. But at the same time, it will be available on demand. And because we're going to put Starlink satellite, internet satellites on every secondary school, the teachers can use the Starlink to show the children the demonstration by these teachers. And so you can be in Bunkurgu Secondary School. The best maths master in Wesley Girls will be teaching you because you'll be able to download his course material. the Basintali boy. We'll provide free tertiary education, I've said that already. We'll provide continuing students with financial assistance. We're going to reintroduce what we, were, we, we had started, which is the Student Loan Fund uh, Trust Fund Plus. It's a Student Loan Plus. And so it's an enhanced student loan. You get more money from the Student Loan Plus, and you only start paying when you get employment, when you leave school. Um, implement a bed for all. We have a bed for all program. Our tertiary institutions have huge lands that are not utilized. Normally when we want to build a university, we take a huge piece of land and after many years, part of the land is uh, still lying fallow and even people are encroaching on the land. And so we're going to sit with the universities and carve out a part of their land. And we're going to get the private sector. We'll do a design of hostels. If you're interested in investing your money in the hostel, you will build the hostel, we'll regulate the charges, and you'll pay for the cost of it over a period of time, and you can make your profit. So that more of our children can have accommodation on campus. That is the bed for all program. The hostels will be built by the private sector. They will build it, they will charge the fees, but we'll sit with them and regulate the fees so that they are not too ex ex exorbitant. Um, what else? Uh, legislation to streamline and regulate the award of government scholarships. Government scholarships have been fraught with a lot of, uh, let me say, kalabule. We want to streamline it, and as I've said, persons with conflict of interest will not be allowed to apply for scholarships. I would not apply for a scholarship for my children. None of my ministers will do it. Any political appointee must not apply for scholarships. You must pay for yourself. Leave, leave the scholarships for the children of the underprivileged. Those who cannot afford it are the ones who must get the scholarships. And we're going to do that. We'll abolish teacher licensure exams. will abolish teacher licensure exams and integrate it into the licensing process in their final year exam. We will institute the Teacher Dabre project. And what this means is that any new school we are building must be accompanied by accommodation for teachers. We are not going to build classroom blocks anymore without teacher accommodation. Every new classroom block, every school must have teacher accommodation. And we'll also accelerate providing accommodation by the existing schools that do not have them. And that will be the teacher dabre, it means where teacher will sleep uh, 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 program. Um, 
In consultation with the stakeholders, we would push ahead with the implementation. This has been on the drawing board for a long time. That is 20% basic salary, special allowance for teachers and health workers who accept postings to rural areas. Most of our teachers and health workers don't want to go to rural areas. Everybody wants to serve in the city. And so we're going to map out what we define as rural areas. If you accept posting to go there, you get 20% of your basic salary as an incentive, as an allowance to teach in the rural area. Expand infrastructure to ensure prompt employment of nurses and teachers. And so that is also part of it. Assist teachers to own their own vehicles of their choice by offering flexible duty payment arrangements and employer, employer guarantees in partnership with teacher unions and the banking sector. We will encourage teachers to take loans to own their own cars, teachers and other public sector workers. And so your bank will pay for the car. We will deduct it from your salary and pay it straight to the bank. And what we'll do is we will not waive the duty on the vehicle. What we'll do is we'll allow you to pay the duty in small installments until you finish paying the duty so that the car is yours. You'll be using the car while paying bit by bit by bit. I didn't say one CD, two CDs. Uh, that will take 1,000 years to pay. But it will be a percentage of your salary that will go towards paying off the uh, cost of the car and the installment payments of the duties. Um, this is going to be the age of the, of the uh, railways. We have paid lip service to building railways for a long time. And this time, we want to make a move on it. It's going to be done by build, operate, and transfer. Because we've been shut out of the international credit market, there's no way we can go on the capital market and borrow to build railway lines. We're going to offer an expression of, of interest, transparent to companies that are willing to invest in our railways, and they will bring the money, they will build the railway lines, and all all the revenue will go towards repaying the railway lines. And so if it takes 25 years to repay, they will control it for 25 years. After 25 years, when they have recouped their money, then we'll sit down with them and then they will transfer the assets to the government of Ghana. And so the western and eastern lines will be connected to the landlocked countries. And so there will be a line that joins from the western and eastern lines and goes up north to Burkina Faso so that we can send Burkina Faso containers up to their country and we can bring down their cotton and their imports down to the ports for exports. Construct urban intercity railways and bus rapid transit. The time has come for us to take some of our people off the roads. Uh, many countries are moving in that direction. And so there are light railways that supplement the uh, 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 urban transport system. And so we'll do a feasibility study and see how we can get BOTs to start light uh, transit uh, rail. Um, promoting responsible mining, ban issuance of new mining leases and activities in forest reserves. We are going to close the forest reserves and get all those Akunta mining and all of them who have desecrated our forest reserves. We are going to march them out of the forest reserves. Some of those trees in the forest reserves are 700, 800 thousand years old. And just because you want to take a little gold from there, you go and destroy the whole forest reserve. That is why we are having drought in our that is part of the reason why our cocoa industry is going down. Because we're not getting enough rainfall. Because looking for that small gold they will get, they are destroying all the forest reserves and destroying the climate in our country. So those there get ready, start packing your things. After 7 January, if you are not out of the forest reserve, we are going to come and march you out of the forest reserve. We'll establish mining cooperatives in all mining districts. We'll set up a gold board that will be responsible for buying gold from the small, small scale mining center. The way, have, the way we have the cocoa board, buying cocoa from the farmers, we'll have a gold board that will buy all the gold from the small scale miners. It will send it to our own refinery to be refined and we'll export refined gold and get all the value addition instead of sending the raw bullion out the way we are currently doing. Uh, decentralized regulatory licensing and processes for artisanal miners. 
that is uh, setting up offices of the Minerals Commission in all mining districts. Implement a blue water initiative to heal and harness the environment. We are going to clean the poisoned waters that have been poisoned by mining so that we can discharge those waters back into our rivers. We are also going to uh, hide the young people in tree growing and so in the areas where mining has finished we will level the ground, close all the holes and we'll have young boys from the community, we'll pay them a stipend every month, we'll give them a bobo yas, we'll put polytanks in there so that they can plant trees on the mined out land so that we can reclaim the land. Uh, implement, implement a tree for life reafforestation policy, this is what I just talked about. And so we're going to plant commercial trees like cocoa, palm and rubber on the lands that have been reclaimed. Um, implement a blue water initiative, I just talked about it. So these are just tidbits of uh, what you are going to see in the manifesto. Uh, my running mates and the uh, vice president of the Republic of Ghana to be Jenana Okokwa Jeman and other, and other experts will go into more detail in some of the areas that I've touched on. But this is just a tidbit of uh, what we are to see. I'll come back after with the 120 day agenda. That is Winnie and Sama, a course, a war high winning so I had John Dramani Mahama and I had seen in Cassa, or Cassano, manifesto no, and no, and now or the art to join it as a or Cassa in the first one twenty days in power no, as a tax society say, obey ye through in a or the Nina to ya, eleven eight as a tax on beta, a any asam kitu a crebusia, ya very abida for us to say, Moje Penny Cocotisa, old you know, Edima, and then Sama or Kennedy, baby brina. Ghana Fonso, I am ready for John Dramani Mahama. Any easy, Madam Asa.